Hello, good morning, me hearties, and dinky-doo. Tis just me, Scotty McClure, back with you, saying hi. Live streaming on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and the world's most humble man. Three great titles I lay claim to. Good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Happy Friday. Happy May Day, the 1st of May. Can you believe it? This lockdown takes its toll on time. Anyway, we're here to have great fun, a great laugh, a good piece of nonsense. Fantastic. And I've got uh, my trusty glass of water. Mm. Fantastic. And I hope this is an absolute belt of guys. So let's get these figures up and get sharing right away. Right, who have we got? First on, the wonderful Jack Menelies. Good morning, Jack. Lovely to have you with us. Sean Smith is next. Sean Smythe is next. Sean Smythe, good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Jack Arthur, Longshanks Leonard. Morning, Scotty, says Tony Mack. There we go. Uh, good morning, Scotty boy, says Jack Arthur. Good morning, Jack. Peter Garvin's watching. Fantastic. Karim Zakaria. Good morning, Karim. Lovely to have you with us. Hope you're well. Happy May Day. Happy May Day to everybody. Fantastic. And uh, Sean Smythe, thank you do, Scotty. A lovely Friday ahead. Yes, and what a great start. All of us getting together on Facebook Live for a bit of chit-chat. You can't beat that. Morsi Puffin in Australia. Morning from Sydney. Oh, you're early, Morsi, but I'll do you the hat. So there we go. Fantastic. Morsi's here from Sydney in Australia. So it's time to stick on the jackaroo and say good day, cobbles, and welcome to everybody from Australia, whether you're in Sydney or Queensland, West Australia, New South Wales, you are welcome. Air Rock, you are welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all our Australian viewers watching Scotty McClue right now. Fair dinkum and fair dinky do, cobbers. Excellent. Good day. Right, there we are. Quick change. Back to the bonnet. Alt Cleese and Parich. Lovely to have you with us. Morning, Morsi. Fantastic. She's watching in Sydney in Australia. Sylvia Foster's watching. Good morning, Sylvia. Lovely to have you with us. David Diston. John Marshall. Ooh, up early the day, John. Longshanks going to get a shout out today, Scotty. I'm hung over and feel like a bust couch. How does a bust couch feel, Longshanks? Like you? Yes. Larry Donaldson's watching. Thank you, dear. And uh, John Marshall is with us, which is fantastic. Thanks, Sean, he says. Ian Kerr's watching. Fantastic, Ian. Welcome. Good morning from Peter Garvin, who's now signed in. Wonderful. Welcome, 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 Peter Garvin. David Thompson, Dinky Doo. Good morning and Dinky Doo to you, David. Lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Scotty. So the wonderful Gene Smith and two kisses. Mwah. Good morning to you, Gene. Lovely to have you with us and thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Scotty, don't forget to support our angels in blue and their bravery. Derek Buckham. I don't think anyone could forget our angels in blue. Tremendous. And what about Captain Tom now? Colonel Tom Moore. Yesterday, Colonel Moore uh, raising over £30 million. Pounds. There we are. Gordon Robertson, hello. Hello, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Do, a fellow pianist. Wonderful stuff. Hi from Glen Rothers, Glen Rose, Martin Byrne. Wonderful man. Welcome, Martin, and love to Glen Rothers. I would imagine it is gorgeous this morning as ever. The sun shining. Fantastic. You could never meet more friendlier people than you meet in Glen Rothes. Because when you've gone through every roundabout several times, if you stop and talk to somebody, they will direct you. So I don't think it's all that difficult once you get the code. Am I correct, Martin? Tell us more, I say. 
Jack says, only another 22 days till my birthday. I can't wait. Jack, are you a Taurian? Remember, if we're doing a pop-up on your birthday, you must come on and get a big mention. Very important. David Harry's watching. Thomas Peden is with us. The Big Friday pop-up. Absolutely, Tom. Great to have you with us. Tam. Sorry, Tam. When you're referring to Thomas Peden, it's either Sir, Mr. Peden, Thomas, or Tam. Yeah, there you go. You can't beat that. So welcome. Tony Max watching. George Newton, good morning, Scotty. Your first question today, George has taken it upon himself to test old McClure to the limit. So there we are. And yesterday, John Logie Baird was one answer, and um, Ebenezer Place in Wick was the other. Murray Scotty, your first question today, and an easy one. Scotland has the only scheduled air service in the world to land on a tidal beach. Is it Tyree, Barra, or Ben Becula? Now, do I phone a friend? <coughs> or um, <coughs> do I phone a friend? Don't worry about the cough. Had it for 20 years. Do I take away two right answers, two wrong answers, and leaving the right one? Or do I just tell you my idea would be Barra? just up by the McNeil's castle of Kishmul. There we are. Tell me what you think, I tell you. Um, Kishmul's galley. Morsi Puffin is laughing. We love it in Sydney and Australia. Did you like the hat, Morsi? Just for you. Good day, mate. Good day, Morsi. Lovely to have you with us. Two kisses. And... Uh, Mossy is one of our favourite Sheilas. So there you go. Carol Bonds is watching. Did you do? Karen McCusker. Uh, Kareem Zachariah. Scotty McClure. It looks a lovely day today. Any plans for the weekend? Huge plans for the weekend. I'm working on several projects. So there you are. I have many, many things on the stocks. So uh, that will be a very, very busy weekend. I can tell you, uh, suffering from the gout, Scotty, this sedentary lifestyle has beaten me. Now, John Marshall, far be it from me to ask you, and you don't have to answer, but you're not by any chance um, an appreciator of fine port and fine wine, are you? Because that can contribute to the gout, I believe. Poor old Bonnie Prince Charlie... Uh, he suffered from the gout. Yes, Bonnie Prince Charlie suffered from the gout. And I have told this story before, but I knew an old guy who knew an old guy whose grandfather knew Bonnie Prince Charlie and remembered him walking about Rome. He was a poor old soul at the end, actually. He was kind of show pit and hurpling a wee bit with the gout, you know, so we don't want that. Buried in the Vatican, the tomb of King Carlos. Scotty, a shout out for Erin Foy. She was up to all hours watching TV. Tot, tot, totity, tot, 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 tot. Erin Foy watching TV to all hours. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, I've still to confess what I did on Sunday night, I think it was. I still haven't. It's Friday. And I haven't confessed to what I did on Sunday night after the show at 8 p.m., everybody. Can we do some sharing? Molly Scotty, thank you. Do a beautiful day, the side of the Clyde. Stuart McLean, side of the Clyde, are you actually on? So that we know. I think it might be a beautiful day on the other side of the Clyde as well. But what I'm going to do, guys, we must share. This is so vital. Has everybody shared? Share, 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 share. Basso profundo for the sharing. There we are. If Mauro is watching in Italy, he will know what I mean by basso profundo. 
So there we are. Yes, I pinch his cheek and slap his face. <laughs> hey, Mauro. So wonderful stuff, right? There we go. Now, uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Help, help, everybody. If you could all share just now. Finley Morris is, Finley, is it Morris or Maurice? Because it's spelt slightly different. Morris or Maurice, we want to get it right. Uh, we find out we have a wee moose loose about the house. It's a wee baby moose. What's the best way to release it? Now, your best thing, Tony, the problem is lockdown. If you've managed to capture it humanely, then when you're out on your daily exercise, and I know your good lady was wanting you to walk, um, if you can go as far as you can away from the house and then let the mouse loose, I shall tell you for why. I had one in my house in Yorkshire, which was a country house, and we were all sitting in the local hostelry one night, exchanging stories and banter, and a lovely big Yorkshire gentleman said, Aye, you take him a good bit away, Scotty, or mouse will be home before you are. So they've got a great homing instinct to be mice, and if it's a wee tiny, then he'll be back home before you know. But having said that, it might be an idea just to, to, to leave him be, you know, because he's a wee soul and they're so beautiful. I know they're vermin and all the rest of it, but they really are very beautiful. Uh, Stuart McLean, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. I once was seen in my old Land Rover at two in the morning releasing a mouse in my evening suit. And I think if the police had driven past, they may have stopped and thought, what's he doing? So there you are. I'll say, just letting a wee mouse go. A dinky do, Scotty, says Finlay Maurice. Barry Smith is watching. About time to welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Dan Leslie, says Kareem, get up and get watching. Come on, the gaffer's waiting. Yes, we are waiting. Fantastic. Stephen Mulgrew. George Newton's watching, waiting for an answer. Am I right, George? Is it Barra? There we go. The Castle of McNeil. David Lafferty, dinky do. There is a rumor that McNeil of Barra was asked by Noah to be one of the couples joining the Ark for humanity. And he said, no, oh, no, Noah. There is no need for that. The MacNeil has a boat of his own. So there we go. And uh, Gordon still is watching Dinky Do. Thomas Peden's getting Paul Sheridan up and about. Billy Hunter's watching. Thomas Peden is getting Gary Campbell up and about. He's getting Stephen Riley. Get up. Oh, very severe. Gavin Morris, Dinky Do, Scotty. Morning from sunny Bothwell, says the wonderful David Lafferty. Hope all is well. David, we are doing our best to keep the nation well, happy, jolly, informed, educated, and entertained. Now, I can't say fairer than that unless I can't pronounce my Fs or my THs. So there we go. Thank you to everybody who's joined us on the pop-up. Get sharing and sharing and sharing. That we figure up the top there needs to be at 100 minimum. Uh, Kelvin Allen's watching, and you're all charged with doing it, guys, so don't be looking at me. I reckon Ben Becula. David Lafferty's thinking Ben Becula. I think it's bar, uh, David, but we'll not fall out over the islands. Kamra ha u ha chemachi. Falci, falci, chi da mille falci, don bara. So there we are, just if we've got a lot of gales watching this morning. There we are, there will be gales of laughter at McClue's Gaelic, the Gaelic. And uh, Jason Finley's watching. Scotty, what's your opinion on Gypsies? Watched a program in last night on Channel 5, which gave them a bad name. I think people like to give gypsies a bad name sometimes if they don't understand the nature of the Romani people. Now, I think there was a story, somebody can come on and correct me or update me, but I think there was a story about when the Stone of Destiny was stolen in the 1950s, the early 1950s, 
taken from Westminster Abbey under the chair of Edward the Confessor. Was that right, King Edward's chair? And um, Stone of Destiny was taken, and it was brought to Scotland. It's rightful him, of course. And it was brought to Scotland, but it had broken, and part of it was hidden. And when they went back to retrieve it, a gypsy camp had formed, and two of the people who had um, allegedly removed the stone joined the gypsy camp and were welcomed with open arms. Isn't that an interesting story? So there you are. And of course, I worked in the borders on border television. I used to go to the Appleby Horse Fair, and a, a lot of the gypsy community were there. Very, very nice people, some great horse people and great horse drivers. So there you are. Uh, so that's what I think. Peter Connolly, I think people are get that one right. Uh, people are people. Long shanks land, this pop up will be bigger than the cha cha slide, Scotty. I think it's already bigger than the cha cha slide. If you say to people, have you heard of the cha cha slide? They go, um, is that that new dance? See, have you heard of Scotty McClure? Oh, I everybody's heard of Scotty McClure. So there you go. Fantastic. Scotty McClure, you have done teaching and radio. Do you lose your voice at times throughout the year? Because it's happening to me a lot this year. Should I worry? No, Kareem, you shouldn't worry. In schools, there are often so many people and so many young people building their immune systems uh, and also you're touching banisters that maybe another anything up to a couple of thousand people could have touched that morning so you're vulnerable and you have to build up you're vulnerable to attacks and some things attack your vocal cords and make you go very husky I've had it a couple of times but obviously very, very advanced voice training, and I work with senior politicians and business people and broadcasters in training them to use their voice. You see? So I do that. There's very, very senior people. I cannot be so base as to mention. Client confidentiality kicks in, but I train some very, very senior people on vocal techniques. And because you're using your voice a lot, I think teachers should probably be coming to Scotty McClue for vocal training. I may set up, uh, amongst all the other many things I have to do in my life, before I run out of life, run out of puff, run out of voice. But my voice is at very, very, very hard use over the last... Certainly the last 36 to 40, or before that, 40 years, 50 years, because I was a singer very young. I joined choirs when I was seven. So even when my voice broke, I was a, I, I appeared in Songs of Praise as a treble in 1964. Fantastic. So there you are. I was a treble. And, um, you know, fantastic stuff. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, so um, a lot of uh, things, but you can, your voice can be under attack from an infection, and also it just gets very worn. But the whole thing about voice, and this goes for teachers, actors, preachers, anyone that uses the, the army, the sergeant majors, right, don't go! All that sort of stuff. Parade, parade! You see, that sort of, that's not a good use of the voice, actually. So I should be engaged by our armed forces training their sergeant majors. Can you imagine McClure taking on the sergeant major? What? So that sort of thing. And um, I wouldn't worry unless it goes on for a long time. So there you are. That's the whole thing. And only once have I had my voice professionally checked, camera down the throat, up the nose, the full bit. Uh, not a pleasant experience and uh, no problems or worries there at all. But anybody that uses their voice, they want it to last a lifetime. 
So conserve your voice. And if you're teaching, say to the young people, um, ladies and gentlemen, guys, uh, boys and girls, you know, Sir's voice is not strong today. I do want you to have all the knowledge. I have a lot to impart to you. Can you please stop talking and listen? Thank you. So that's the kind of approach because your voice is very important. Children will always go on talking and laughing and shouting and bawling until their voice becomes the most important thing. Does that uh, clear anything up, Kareem? Does that make any sense? I've been known to have a wine from time to time, says John Marshall, but don't tell Mammy. I blamed her lentil soup for the gout. Well, I've never actually heard of that lentil soup cause, causing gout. I think, John Marshall, you're taking a wee bit of a creative liberty with your mammy's lentil soup. Susan Forrest watching, the lovely Susan Forrest. Good morning, Dinky Do, Steve Wilkie, Christine Garvin. Morning, McClure. Good morning, Christine. Lovely to have you with us. Guys, sharing. Share. We need to share. Stop it. There we go. You're distracting me. It's wonderful. Are you seeing that uh, about over, well over 40,000 people have watched McClure since the pop-up started? So that's a start, isn't it? Ewan Galloway is watching. Thank you, do you? Lovely to have you with us. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Peter Conley. Morning, Mr. McClure. Good morning, Peter. Frank Walker. Good morning, Frank. Lovely to have you with us. Davy Mortimer. Welcome, Davy. Always lovely to have you with us. Uh, George Newton, the asker of the difficult questions. Yes, Barra was the correct answer. The only one in the world. How good is that? Absolutely, George Newton. And I hope you liked our story, our banter about Barra. Davy Mortimer says, good morning, thank you do. Good morning, Davy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Scotty McClue's pop-up, the wonder of the world, the eighth wonder of the world. So you've got the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. You've got the Pyramids. What's another wonder of the world? The Sphinx, is that right? Uh, Ross Donnelly, Marcus G, says Finlay Morris. Gordon Robertson, Confession implies that you have done something you ought not to have done. Since you're a law-abiding man, it must be something that's not really bad. Well, Gordon Robertson, as you know, I have never done anything really bad in my life. And I have only met one bad man, the one that um, conspired to remove my life savings in a failed business venture. So they are failed because of the stewardship. So that's the only bad man I've ever met. There we are. But uh, I do have to confess, and if you remind me, I will do so before the end of the program, because I think everybody should attend some sort of confession once a week. So there we are. And it's Friday, and this happened on Sunday night. So I don't know how really bad it is, but I'll tell you about it. Uh, God bless the Irish gypsies, says Stephen Riley. The top of the morning to them all, I say to you, absolutely. There we are. Did you ever see Ryan's daughter and uh, Trevor Howard as the priest? And there were people on the beach getting some packages that had been dropped off by sea. And he said to them, good morning to you, Tinkers. And then as he walked away with Michael, who was uh, John Mills, he said, if them tooths Tinkers, I'm the Bishop of Cork. <laughs> Scotty, did you ever watch the Red Shoe Diaries on Channel 5? No, I didn't, Thomas Peden. Did you ever watch the film The Red Shoes? I was thinking about that yesterday because it's a wonderful actress called Moira Shearer. And Moira Shearer was a director of Border Television. And uh, she was a ballerina. And she was married to Ludovic Kennedy, 
who was perhaps one of the UK's kings of broadcasting at the time, a great journalist, Ludo. He was known affectionately as, he lived in Edinburgh, he's a Scotsman. And in fact, I think he was even related to Robert Boothby. I'm wondering if there were some kind of cousins or something. I can't remember the relationship, but Ludo uh, really ruled the roost a long time and um, also um, introduced the Lord Wreath Looks Back interviews. I remember seeing that with Malcolm Muggeridge. There's a name that oh, some of our older viewers might know. And um, he was there, Ludovic Kennedy and Robin Day. And uh, I'm not sure if they were very briefly with commercial television before they joined the BBC, but they were big, big, big names. Uh, so Robin Day uh, did Question Time. And what a fabulous program. Everyone tuned in to Question Time. He also presented The World at One on BBC Radio 4, the home service. So there you go. So I, Tom, I haven't, Tam. I love you, you mad bass, says uh, Stephen Friday. Uh, I prefer compromising situations, John. Uh, thank you for your help with the wee moose, Scotty. Oh, the wee moose, the wee soul. But uh, don't have him too long. If he's in a trap, put him in a jar. So there we are, because he'll be anxious. Um, or let him go. Uh, Michael Fucker, uh, play the Glen Coe song on your ringer boss. Said, how cool was the snow? Scotty, I don't get on with my neighbours. However, it's all changed during the lockdown. My wife just came in and said, come out and have some fun all. So there we are. Come out and have some fun all. <laughs> yes. Uh, the way, if you're not sure of the time, uh, the neighbours are having a water fight. So I've... See more. So I've decided to join in. I'm just boiling the kettle. <laughs> joke, joke, Mary Jeep. Do not try that at home. Uh, I'll tell you a water fight where I've succeeded in a water fight was um, somebody gave me a water pistol, but this wasn't a, just a wee water pistol out of a cracker. This was called, I think, a super soaker. And boy, was it a super soaker. It did its job. Put a stop to the nonsense. Uh, I once used to work with a lovely fellow. Uh, no, I can't tell that one, Stuart, but lovely, lovely. Too early in the morning, dear boy. So we'll take that one down. How low is the snow that sweeps Glen Coe? How low is the snow that sweeps Glen Coe? No. Oh, cruel was the snow. Oh, cruel was the snow that sweeps Glencoe and covers the house of MacDonald. There you go. There's your starter. Frank Pilkey is watching. Frank Pilkey, I am a massive fan of yours. Now, Frank is one of the most wonderful guys you could meet, one of the loveliest people you could ever meet. Wonderful man, and uh, he is a fantastic astrologer and interpreter of dreams. And you will know Frank from the press, from television, from radio. Outstanding man. Frank, lovely to hear from you. And Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure. Frank watched me on the wonderful Scott FM, a very, very popular member of staff. So there you are. Uh, Glenn Coe, says Stephen Riley. Yes, indeed, Glenn Coe. Not Glenn Coe. Does anybody know what Glenn Crow was? Now, come on. Stephen Menzies is watching. Stephen Menzies, thank you very much for posting the picture of the launch of the Glen Sanox in 1957. Now, I've been on the Glen Sanox many a time. She was the main boat for the Aran Run. That's why she was really quite a substantial vessel. And believe it or not, the daughter of the captain of the Glen Sanox may well be watching this pop-up. She's a friend on Facebook. And a uh, wonderful lady, an author. And um, 
She was built in the Ilsa ship building yard in Trun in 1957. She was a very popular big ship and, of course, a car ferry going to Arran. And in those days, <coughs> this was kind of getting near the end. She had a cafeteria. Before on the boats, it was the dining saloon. But she had a cafeteria, but you could still get yourself a scrambled egg roll, cups of lovely strong tea out the big teapot that really would put hairs on your chest on a, on a winter's voyage back over from Arran. So there you are. Uh, and you would pr probably have met the Reverend James Curry on the boat coming back from his farm, Drumadoon. Uh, so there we are. Tony Mac, just to let people know if they have an MOT due on the 30th of March or after this date, they will get a six-month extension and will be allowed to keep driving as long as the vehicle is roadworthy um, during the coronavirus, just to save anyone worrying. Excellent. Do check that up, folks, because uh, that's a good one from Tony. Finley Morris, hope you win, bruv, says Marcus G. Fantastic, Marcus G. And there we are, Stephen Riley, dinky-doo. Stephen, you can't come out with that sort of stuff on here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't You can't actually come out of that. A lot of misunderstandings with that set up. So there we are. So somebody, um, there was somebody putting an alternative view to yours last night but just as bad. So there we are. So someday we'll talk about all that, but I'll delete that just now, Stephen, and spare your blushes. See how McClue looks after his viewers. So there we are. Thanks, Marcus. It's a big one. I'll knock his socks off. So there we are. Ooh, harsh. Michael Yule's watching. Morning, Scotty. Dinky do. Says the wonderful Alistair King. Guys, we haven't shared a thing. Come on. Stop. Stop this. Share. We must get sharing. <laughs> You're a distraction, the whole lot of you. There we go. We're halfway through the show, and we haven't shared. Let me know if you've shared. I should be able to see it. Uh, Stuart McLean, apologies, Scotty, a light-hearted humour. I know, no, that's absolutely fine. Just a wee bit early in the morning for it. No problem at all. Nothing is a problem on here, guys. We are a big, big fun show, and everybody is loving it. I get the emails during the rest of the day, so I can see how much you guys love this pop-up. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. So there you go, because it's all about you. And there we are. Remember, I've been broadcasting for 36 years of television and radio, so it's not a problem. But um, I want you to get a little light relief during this dreadful, dreadful, unprecedented time. You know, and I want you to be lovely to other people. So there we are. Fantastic stuff. Lentils are full of prunes, which cause gout. Bucky is the cure, John Marshall. Oh, purine, sorry. I thought you said lentils are full of prunes. <clears throat> I can remember being in a meeting and there was a husband and wife there and this lady was eating dates. She was a very healthy lady and she was eating dates and she said, would you like a date? And I said, listen, two things. We've only just met and your, your husband's here. Do you like see what I just did there? Uh, so lentils are full of purines. Yes. Good morning, Scotty. Mwah. Good morning, Susan Forrest from Lancashire. Lovely to have you with us. Good evening, Zachariah. Scotty McClure, I was driving to the shops yesterday and nearly had a heart attack. Stop! The police stood at the side of the road with their speed gun. I was going down a country road at 36. Always need to be alert and focused. I don't think you'd have got stopped in a country road. Was the country road, uh, if you were out with the limit, then it would be 60, unless there was anything to say 50. And it used to be 
the case that the police would not do you under 37 and a half. Now, 37 and a half was also wartime convoy speed. So there we are. Because my father was driving a major in a Willys Jeep at Operation Market Garden. And um, my father must have slightly exceeded the speed limit. The major was barking orders to people. And he forgot himself a little bit. And he said to my father, <coughs> do 37 and a half. Stick to convoy speed. Then he prodded my father with his stick. Now, my father was a very, very fair big man, but he didn't take kindly to uh, people prodding him regardless of rank. So he slammed on the brakes in the Willie's Jeep. The major went completely A over T and ended up in the footwell. My father uh, stopped and the major managed to extricate himself from the footwell, unharmed, uh, rolled himself back up. The last thing he'd picked up was his stick and his service cap, which he squared on his head. My father was waiting for a severe punishment. The major was obviously a very wise people person, and he said, I do apologize. My fault, I think. Or maybe it was just my fault, I think. And that was it. That was an end to it. And I could tell you another wonderful story like that about the king. I might tell you about that someday. Who is responsible for this to your savings? Name them. We will get it sorted out for you. Thomas Peden. That would be my worry. That's why I won't name them. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> McClure is so well looked after by so many wonderful people. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> I always remember a top, top lawyer saying to me, Scotty, if you ever have a problem with anybody big, just let me know, because I can always find you somebody bigger. <laughs> so there we are. Uh, I um, I move in many, many illustrious circles, Tam, but I thank you for your thoughtfulness and your caring. It uh, was a very, very difficult 12 years. Uh, the wonderful Kenny Hyde is watching. Dinky you, Kenny. Lovely to have you with us. A real top man. And what Kenny Hyde does not know about cars is not worth knowing. There we are. And um, he can tell you about the lot. He can tell you what a car is worth at a glance. Wonderful. Stephen Riley's giving it. Ha ha. Ha ha, Stephen. Excellent. Good man. Uh, morning, Scotty. Beautiful day now. Michael Yule is just not gorgeous. And what you did, Peden. Don't know what's going on there. Thomas Peden is talking about somebody else. Or Finley's talking about somebody else. Guys, don't be slagging each other off too much. Not, it's not a slag off show. So there we go. Delete that one. I've seen the red shoes, Scotty. A good film. I think she had lovely red hair. Beautiful red hair. Red flame haired ballerina. <clears throat> and when Ludovic proposed to her, um, I'm pretty sure she said to him, he said, uh, he wanted to take, he asked her for a dance. That that was it. And she said to him something like, it was something about dancing she didn't do. It must have been something to do with modern dancing because she was a very famous ballerina. So there we are. Wonderful lady. Lovely couple. Ludovic Kennedy and Moira Shearer. Can we get something extra religious on the organ this morning, Scotty? I've committed sinful acts while on the L. <laughs> Don't stop. Long shanks. Used to see these advertised in the paper. Uh, Robert Rovers. By the way, did I say morning, Scotty? Margaret Sheldon, I don't think you did. But I will let you off because you're one of my favourites. So there we are. Mwah. Top lady. Uh, down in the Midlands, they're watching Scotty McClure. Uh, Stephen Menzies, my son's grandparents were born and lived on Barra at Brevig. 
They were extras in the film Whiskey Galore. Is that the first Whiskey Galore? Because there's been a remake with uh, Gregor Fisher. The first Whiskey Galore was uh, Duncan McRae and Gordon Jackson, all these wonderful people. Uh, loved spending my summer holidays on the Isla. Um, there was, um, during the Manchester bombing, um, a terrible, terrible thing happened. And uh, there was a lovely young girl from Barra lost her life in that. And um, I went on air. So if you uh, are ever, it's very, very serious though. Uh, if you ever want to be on YouTube and you look up Scotty McClue Manchester, you will see Scotty McClue's broadcast following the Manchester bombing. But I do assure you, it was a very harrowing time for a lot of lovely people, for everyone really as well, and particularly for the people of Barra and the family of that lovely young girl that lost her life. So there we are. But do um, do have a look at that. But it is McClue being very serious. I do warn you. I took you the wink. Uh, do, you tape a, do you take a sip of honey every night to keep your voice good? What's the best tips to keep your voice good? <clears throat> Tony Mack, the best tips to keep your voice good are to use it properly. So your proper breathing, there's two forms of breathing, as you know, well, there's many um, different takes on the two forms of breathing. One is clavicular breathing. Up at your clavicle, your collarbone. You know that people sometimes fracture their clavicle, maybe a fall from a horse or something. And that shallow breathing, so if you watch my hand, shallow breathing. Then there's intercostal diaphragmatic breathing. And your intercostals are the belts of muscles that are woven in and out your 12 pairs of ribs. And um, your ribs cannot open themselves. It's your muscles, like old-fashioned bellows. Swing out and suck the air into your lungs. Otherwise, your lungs are like a paper bag. They wouldn't actually hold the air. So that's what happens. So they swing out like that. And um, that's you doing intercostal diaphragmatic breathing because your diaphragm goes outwards and downwards on your tummy. And um, you can hold air in the diaphragm. The abdominal wall will push down and allow space, and you can fill that with air. Now you can talk for a long time. Also, your articulation. So you're not using the voice box. The air is passing through. Because your vocal cords, Tony, I don't know what size you think they are. If you unraveled them and set them out, I think they would cover a football pitch, probably. But they're very, very tiny. It's very, very strange. Size of your thumbnail. That's your vocal cord. Size of your thumbnail there. And they bang together with the breath, which is the exciter. And that's your vocal cords for you. Your larynx, there we are, your voice box, which tilts. And that's why you shouldn't really have anything too tight around it. Which is why the other day, my voice was looking, my tie was looking like a dog's dinner. Uh, so there we are, a sip of honey. I like the honey, though. There's a good film called Black Brogue starring an actor. And it's a Scottish amateur producer. Thomas, I'll have a look at that. So there we are. I'll have a look at it before I make an announcement. Gordon Robertson, the wonderful Gordon Robertson. A genius. Guys, more sharing. What is going on? I ask you. So there we are. Right, more sharing. Um, who are we sharing to now? Are we sharing to a group? Have we done that? Did we share to a group? There we are. Let's get carried away with the sharing. Gordon Robinson's telling us that Ludo Kennedy's wife presented the 1972 or was it 1973 Eurovision Song Contest from the Usher Hall. Yes. And when did Kenneth McKellar sing for the Eurovision? Was it, and what was the song? Was it A Man Without Love? Was that the Kenneth McKellar song? Can't remember. Can't look it up on the device because I'm on it. Uh, somebody else can look it up for me. Scotty, give Kenny a shout out. Been painting the front of the house since 6 a.m. 
Have you got the missus out painting the house? And I hope you're doing something as a quid pro quo. So there we are. Robert Rovers, thank you, good morning, Scotty. Busy morning, but made it at last. Robert Rovers, you are very welcome. We love when people make it at last. Guys, can everybody share? Right now, I'm serious. Share to your groups. Share to the whole lot. I'll share to the Scotty McGrew group. We'll get that out there. That will be fantastic. There we are. There we are. Um, right, to a group. Share in a group. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderbar. So there we are. Guys, I've got some very, very good news, which we can talk about. I can't obviously go into any detail, but uh, I've got a communication from a very, very, very senior radio person yesterday. So... Watch this space, I say to you. Wonderful. It's just, it only needs one switched on programmer, and McClue is back on your wirelesses, and maybe even your television sets. Who knows? So fantastic. So some very, very senior communications coming my way. Wonderful. Wouldn't it be great if I made it like Captain Tom at 100? Fantastic. It used to be, we used to say in the media profession, if you didn't make it by the time you were 96, you probably wouldn't. But um, no, that's not what we said at all, actually. We used to go, if you don't make it before you're 30, you know, a <laughs> lot of nonsense. Gordon uh, Hatley's watching. Yeah, says Stephen Riley. Peter Connolly tells us, my wife, my wife likes to relax and have a cup of tea. Give her wee daughter her breakfast between 10 and 11. So I watch the pop-up upstairs. Oh, you've got an upstairs. Very posh. Until yesterday, I thought she hadn't noticed what I was. Wait a minute. What I was doing. Till last night, she asked me to do an omelette. And when we were tucking in, I asked, how was it? Uh, and her and my six-year-old said at the same time, dinky-doo. I love it, Peter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we are. The women are saying dinky-doo. That's what it's all about. Now then, who have we got here? Thomas Beaton. So there we are. What did you make of Longshanks Leonard music set? I tagged you in last night, Scotty. Thomas Peden, I shall have a listen. Oh, yes, I did. I loved it. Yes, in the jamming session. Fantastic. Yes, good for you. Well done. Everybody can see that. If you scroll down, Scotty, site, have you noticed in a Facebook discussion how few people Scroll down to find out what the discussions are about. So somebody posts something and they all post back. You know, it's uh, we had this with the Brexiteers. And I would say to them, I think we need to uh, not leave Europe. Ha, huh, Scotty McClellan, half-witted idiot, and more severe stuff. All that without scrolling back to see all my sensible reasoning. Hey, apologies, Scotty, just a bit of light-hearted humour, but it was a true story. Stuart McLean, I know. Have you got a wife or a partner, Scotty? I'm just being nosy. Martin Byrne. Darling, Martin Byrne's wanting to know if I've got a wife or a partner. What would you say? She, she says she'll come back to me on that. So there we are. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. I'll give you half a crown for a sniff at <laughs> Stephen Riley. Why would anybody want to smell foodstuffs apart from the fact, um, you know, they may be past the sell-by? So there we are. Sorry, boss, says Stephen. No problem. Whoops, says Stephen. Nikki Harvey winnings watching. Stephen, you need to steady on. We don't want you getting a lifetime ban and never seeing another McClue pop up in your puff. 
I got abuse for a wee joke, Stephen. I'm not surprised. The wonderful Ian Slorach is watching. Good morning, Ian. Welcome and dinky do. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you with us. Murray O'Donnell's watching. What a top man from out there in Stirlingshire, out in the country, out in the sticks. Why do people say out in the sticks, Murray? Have you heard that one before? Robin Banks, dinky do, one of our finest broadcasters. Scotty, brilliant to see you. And you, Robin Banks, you are a real top man. Excellent. It was lovely to meet you at the Radio Fest. There we are, um, down in um, Alton Towers. There we are. If we share the wrong types, we'll get the riffraff joining. Keep it classy, says Gordon Robertson. Gordon Robertson, you are 100% correct. I can tell you because... The wonderful thing about this pop-up is it's stuffed full of clever people. There's not one idiot or one lowlife on the whole pop-up. And I love that. It's attracting the intelligentsia of the world. We can't say fairer than that. Share, everybody. Come on, I'm just about to share. You can do it as well. You can share. We're all capable. We can all do the sharing. We've all got a wee share button. Share Scotty McClure and share it to all your groups and tell everybody about it. And all of you get a, a watch party going. Um, hi, Noggins, as Margaret Shed Sheldon. Alistair King shared, you are a top man. How's the bike? Have you been out rubbing everything up? Oh, I saw your picture of her ticking over, Alistair. Sounds pretty smooth. You've got the tick over just right there. Is there a choke on a motorcycle? Nicky Graham's watching Dinky Doo, Dinky Doo, Scotty. Top of the morning to you, you see. There's another member of the intelligentsia, and she's just joined us. Have you just got up, Nicky, or have you just joined us? Some people might have to do the high dusting before they join us. Before you join Scotty McClue, make sure your hoose is Dinky Doo. There we are. There was an old lady called Bessie who went to Loch Ness to see Nessie. She fell in the mud with a terrible thud and Nessie seen Bessie all messy. Stop! Stop, Peter Carley! I love it. Shall we say it once more, just for the tape? <laughs> There was an old lady called Bessie who went to Loch Ness to see Nessie. She fell in the mud with a terrible thud and Nessie seen Bessie all messy. Love it, Peter Connolly. Stephen Riley is not big or clever. Trying to ruin a fine Friday morning listening to Scotty. Keep that stuff for another page. Stuart McLean, your wisdom is outstanding. Very, very wise words to our Mr. Riley. I wonder if he's related to Riley of the car fame. Yes, I had a friend drove a Riley. There was a two and a half and a one and a half. One was called the RMA. I don't know if that was the two litre. No, was that two and a half? I think it might have been a two litre. No, it was a two and a half. I'm pretty sure the Riley, the 1950s Riley, was a two and a half and a one and a half. Scotty, can I get a shout out for the boys at uh, SVM working from home and a special mention for just handed in his final dissertation. Dinky do, Gavin Morris, of course you can. Hello, Margaret Sheldon and Scotty, says the wonderful Noggins Richie. Hello, Noggins. Uh, Stuart McLean, <coughs> well done, Beardy. Big round of silent applause every day for Beardy. Yay. We love it, Beardy. Um, John Marshall is talking. He's not talking to me. Oh, shut up, you tart, says John Marshall. That's not me. I'm just quoting John Marshall to his friends. If he treats his friends like that, what does he do to his enemies? Uh, Stuart McLean, calm down, Stuart. Who made you the page, please? Confiscate his phone, send him to his room. McClues is judge, jury, and executioner on that. Um, I am Thomas Peden, and it's a very difficult situation I find myself in. 
I don't want to have to put on the black cap. Oh, we don't want that again. So there we go. <laughs> there we go, Tony Mac. In reply to Kareem, do you notice speed cameras are always put at the bottom of the hills? I think this is to catch drivers out as drivers have to slow down. There was a lovely story about a famous sheriff and he had a, a crim uh, came up the stairs, was brought up the stairs into the courtroom and he overheard say, I thought that we so-and-so was deep. Right? And he pronounced the sentence. The guy who was taken down said, take him back down, please. The, um, the bobbies took him back down the stairs, and the sheriff apparently, allegedly, whispered down the staircase, I'm very much alive, so I'm not dead, but I'm still a wee so-and-so. So there you go. Wonderful stuff. We like it. Has anybody seen that wonderful, wonderful American judge that's incredibly kind to those that appear before him? Wonderful. I was enjoying him the other day. He's just so good. Uh, it was Waterfoot Road in Glasgow, says Kareem. Um, now, I'm trying to think of the... It's quite a narrow road to that, Kareem, because... You're coming up to uh, one of the big high schools. So depending on what way you were going, were you going towards Clarkston or were you going towards um, the other way? The other way takes you up to uh, the wee village that you go through. It's just escaping me. Fantastic. Well, come back to me. The wee village... Uh, that you would go through there. So but so I think there might be, but I think there are speed signs on it and they're quite clear. And if they didn't, um, did they stop you at the time? See, I think if they'd gunned you, there would have been a patrol car up ahead, a traffic car up ahead that would have flagged you down and had a word. I think so. I don't think they would just gun you and send it out. Although that's the way... The old cameras work. So there we are. Um, Scotty, can I get a shout out for my meat on this Fraser Guthrie? You can indeed. Um, I've eaten bigger tarts than you, Stu. John, this is not an argy bargy. Now I'll put the pair of you in uh, time out if you don't stop their nonsense. Uh, Stephen Riley, stop that. Uh, I'm having a break from the bike today, Scotty. Only a couple of wee things to do now. It's completely built and looking wonderful. Think I'll install my CCTV today instead. Yes, because the good thing about lockdown, if you've got CCTV, you can remind yourself of what you were up to. I was early with my good morning, Scotty. You were, Margaret Sheldon. You were very early. You're a great lady. You're up and about. Hi, Dusting Dunn. Ross Guthrie's watching. Mike McCabe's watching. Lovely to have you with us. Guys, we're running out of time. Have we time for a quick hymn? What would you like this morning? There was a lady gave some money to the Salvation Army Band at Christmas. And it was a lot of money. And the bandmaster came up, the conductor, and he said, Since you've been so generous, madam, could I ask you what hymn you would like? And she points and she says, I'd like him with a big drum. Oh, right. Now, here we go. A hymn for the weekend. I still have to confess, remember. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
do you for the day? Are we ready? It is confession time for McClure. What did McClure do last Sunday evening that he shouldn't have done? I watched Elephant Man. And I saw it when it came out. And it is such a moving, moving film. I was in floods. And then I had to get to sleep or I'd have been late for the Monday pop-up at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning. Do you see what happened? When I saw it, I should have said, no, 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 no. I don't know why the television companies think that films like Elephant Man or Schindler's List or that sort of stuff, which are the most outstanding pieces of filmography. Wonderful. But I don't know why they think that that will cheer us up during the coronavirus lockdown. During a widespread outbreak of that. I don't know why they do that. But anyway, there we are. But that's what I did. So I fessed up now. Mike McCabe's watching. Can I get a shout out from ex-wife Scotty? You know what they say? Uh, Long shanks, Leonard. Thank you. And now I have to dash. We are out of time. We're over time. We're into injury time. Thank you for being such a wonderful, wonderful viewing audience this morning. I hope I have managed to inform, educate, and entertain you as much as one can within a time limit of one hour or one hour for our international audience, an hour. And uh, I hope you'll uh, all join me on Monday, Sunday night, sorry, Sunday night, 8 p.m. sharp, be there or be square, and then following that, Monday morning at 10 o'clock sharp. From me, Scotty McClure, to every single one of you, take great care of your dear selves. Stay fantastic, stay fabulous, stay beautiful, but most importantly of all, stay well, stay safe, and stay in. Dinky-doo, everybody. Have a lovely weekend. Ta-da-las. Oh.